Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In this short video, I would like to explain what we are doing at RWTH Aachen University in my chair of bioenergetic chemistry within the EU-funded project uh, Uplift. So we are working on the synthesis and recycling of bioplastics. Lactide polymerization and depolymerization is here in the focus. So there are numerous bioplastics which we are dealing with in the project, but lactide and uh, polylactide is uh, the plastics which has the largest part within the bioplastics family. And also here the degradation and biodegradation and depolymerization studies are most advanced. Just as a glimpse, what is, de what is uh, dealing here with this bioplastics is that we can just start, for example, with um, biofeedstocks, for example, corn, on sugar cane, sugar beets, depending on the region where you are working, or also second, second generation feedstocks like straw or residues from um, alimentation, for example. And after fermentation, you can obtain lactic acid, and after dimerization, you obtain the lactide, and in the ring opening polymerization, you can come then to the polylactide. So the inorganic chemist as catalyst developer comes in into play here in this field. And in, in fact, bioplastics are too valuable to just use them only once. So here this arrow, recycling, gains more and more importance. So in the best case, you can just go cycling here, back and forth, produce lactide, make polylactide and go back and forth again. But sometimes in the end, the material is, can no longer be used. And so it's interesting to investigate how can it be decayed. For example, is the biodegradation fast enough, for example, the degradation in nature, or is the incineration in the end, uh, as thermal use, also quite practical. And what's uh, more important is that in the end, wherever, whichever way you are going, you end up with CO2, and the CO2 then closes the loop via the photosynthesis to the biofeedstocks again. As application, for example, application in the packaging of uh, fruits or packaging of vegetables can be named, or also uh, water cups and different single-use cups, for example, but also in the biomedicinal uh, range, you have uh, polylactide screws using, to be used in the bones, for example, a lot of yeah, spare parts, as I would say, for special bones in the human body. They are already in research and sometimes also in clinical use. And there are so many further items which you can produce with bioplastics meanwhile. So for example, these parts can be made of bioplastics or uh, mobile phone cases or laptop cases can be made of polylactide meanwhile. Going a little bit into the details, this is lactide, a cyclic diester of uh, lactic acid. And in fact, you have to open this bond to then come to the ring open product, which is shown here. So you have this chain where this unit as lactic acid unit is just repeated again and again to come to uh, the polymer. Normally you use a catalyst and a co-initiator to promote this reaction. And as has already indicated here, this catalyst should not be toxic. At the moment, tin octanoate is performing this reaction and tin octanoate is toxic. So the more we are using bioplastics, the more tin is spilled into the environment. And this is a huge problem. And so in Uplift, we are working to substitute tin against other non-toxic catalysts. This is again a little bit shown here. So we come from the bio feedstocks, go to the biomonomers, and with our catalysts, we can transfer them, transform them to bioplastics. And in the application, for example, in textiles or in the consumer electronics industry, or also in the single use items, we can come then to the degradation of the products, the recycling of the products, and again, back by the CO2 to biofeedstocks. And here it is really tinyly shown is a tin octanoid, which is really highly toxic and um, which may accumulate in the environment with higher usage of bioplastics. And we have worked in the last years on iron complexes and even more active zinc complexes, which we go into the detail now. So on this slide, I just show the molecular structure of one of our most famous guanidine carboxy uh, zinc catalysts. So here's the zinc ion, here is the guanidine group, this Y-shaped group, here is the aromatic ring, and here's the ester group. So um, as guanidine carboxy uh, complex, it is really active in the lactate polymerization, but not as active as the reported tin compound. So we worked on a little bit further over the years and came to iron complexes. So it's the same ligand, so again guanidine group, 
as Easter group, iron group and the aromatic ring. And here with some decoration, for example, with the dimethyl amine group. And what we can see here now, followed by react Raman spectroscopy in this picture. So you can follow, for example, this Raman peak of lactide, which is decreasing and the PLA peak is increasing. You can derive kinetics in the polymerization and then you can compare these kinetics between the catalyst, uh, traditional catalysts and our new catalysts. And what you can see here in green is a tin octanoate. In blue is uh, this rather simple system and in red is shown here the best system which has this small dimethyl amine group. And what we can easily see from here is that we are finally beating tin octanoate. So we have now an industrially usable catalyst which is faster than tin octanoate. And our catalysts are non-toxic. That is really highly important because we made ecotoxicological studies together with the Hollard group now at the University of Frankfurt and they could prove that our catalysts are really non-toxic and may be spilled in the environment when, when this is desired. Going a little bit further, we also checked back our zinc complexes and using bisquonin zinc catalysts. Also here it is possible to enhance the reactivity by not combining the guanidine with a carboxyl group, but a guanidine group with another guanidine group. So we are having now bisguanidine zinc catalysts. And they are again faster. In this case, they are three times faster than the iron guanidine complex. And they are then 10 times faster than tin octonate. So again, we are faster than the industrial catalyst. And meanwhile, we have found that all the catalysts I've shown you have a high depolarization activity for uh, polylactide, but also other polyesters. So this is now the part in the project to dig deeper into this field to understand how we can exactly steer the polymerization speed and the depolymerization speed to have in the end highly efficient catalysts for a better bioplastics future. Thank you very much for your attention.